Hello and welcome back to ELT Under the Covers where we as English language teaching professionals we watch some teaching clips and we give our analysis, our reactions to the good and bad of that teaching. Uh, today uh, I am joined by a special guest but first introductions for all. I am Neil of Team Teacher Fame. I'm joined by the riotous uh, Rumbly, rich, stotally weasel. Oh. Uh, it's it's sto <laughs> stotally Stuart. Uh, we Weasley Wallace. Who should I be? <laughs> A combination. Ferritus Frank. <laughs> we teach you how to climb tough objects. My name is Professor Lich. I'm always happy for you to send me money, and I am your resident expert on using ferrets in the classroom. <laughs> Woodland-based teaching. <laughs> That's it. Next level. And we're also with the frivolous, the fancy, Fanny. That's me. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> I'm not frivolous, I'm frugal. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, let me start that again. And today we're here with the frugal, the fancy, Fanny. Mm. Yes, that's right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I see the pun there. Very panny. Panny. Panny, panny, panny. panny. I don't know. I failed. Yeah. All right. Okay. That, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, and because we've got Fanny on today, uh, it means that we are doing another episode uh, where we're focusing on kindergarten because Fanny is our resident kindy expert, kindergarten expert, not kindy as in the kinder surprise, but I'm sure Fanny has a lot of surprises up her sleeves as well, if she had any. And we are going to be looking at... Um, a YouTuber, a uh, teacher called Mark Kulek. Sorry if I've not pronounced that right. Um, he's My man Mark. Uh, Marky Mark. Chris, crispy Kulek. <laughs> you got it in. You got it in. <laughs> uh, he does a lot of videos, uh, flashcard videos, song videos, teaching English videos. Um, mostly aiming for young kids um, and he's been doing this for a long time and both Fanny and I have used uh, some of his songs and videos in classroom but here we're actually going to look at one of his live action in class um, clips of him teaching to kindergarten so we actually get to see all of this in action it's going to be very exciting so this is him teaching three and four-year-old kids, so this is a really young kindy class. It's almost like a daycare. Um, but, you know, let's see how it goes. Uh, remember, we can uh, pause and react and talk about this as we go along. So, are we all ready? Piano. Piano. Oh, yeah, it is. Ah. It certainly looks like it. Is this a... Is this a prelude for what's to come? Because I don't think I could top, you know, playing piano in class, to be honest. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, let's go. Maybe a saxaboom. Hey, hey, that stretch. Stretch to your oh. side. Oh. Okay, stretch to the other side. Stretch up high. Stretch up high. Okay, touch your toes. Oh no, don't be doing that. My God, look, he can as well. Oh, he's bending, he's bending his knees. Okay, roll your shoulders. Oh, it's always good to roll your shoulders. Okay, stretch your back. Oh, bye, bye, bye. Shake your body. Oh, they're all kids are all engaged, they're all into it. Fingers 
Ten jumping jacks of the entire just one time. Super simple song. I like all the actions with the words. Is that his stick that he beats them with? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, really? That's a real one, isn't it? It's the super simple um, learning song. They got great songs. Hello, 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 how are you? Hello, hello, oh, this hello thing is quite familiar with. Yeah, I've heard people sing on that. I'm hungry. I'm not so good. Okay, nice. Okay, CD. CD. Oh, what is this? No. Just, uh, one second, sorry. Is it, this is, oh, it is, it is, yes, oh, okay, I was just checking them. Because I was like, whoa, that seems a bit simple for native kids, but that makes sense in there. No, this is a, it's an ESL class. He, he does focus on teaching English. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's, it's quite old, Fanny. Okay. Because there's like no PowerPoint. And they're using CDs. Oh. Yeah, CDs, wow. No. He looks like a bit like the hologrammatic doctor from Star Trek Voyager. Robert Picardo. I know the actor's name. <laughs> well, no, the, 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 the doctor, the hollow uh, Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, his name is something like it that. It is Robert Picardo, also Robert Picardo. in Gremlins. Mm. I have an extensive yeah, uh, history. It's my, my side job <laughs> to know random that, geek I believe, stuff. I believe he features in one of the episodes of uh, Stargate SG-1. So, um, <laughs> with this, on a more serious note, uh, he warms them up. He's got them moving around, they're all engaged, they're all on the same energy level at the beginning. I really like that. Then, he's teaching a song, but before he even plays the song, he's going over the actions, going over the lyrics, yeah. going, uh, yeah. matching the words to the actions before they even start the song. So they know what they're getting into. And then, yeah. you know, in the song, he's reinforcing that. I think uh, it's great yeah, so far. It's great. It's, and I like it's, the fact, yeah, I like the fact he's walking around, he's engaging. I see he's making eye contact with like the students, mm -hmm. so he's kind of acknowledging them and like showing that I'm paying attention to you. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can see the kids engaging. I'm pretty sure they want his attention as well. Yeah. yeah. He seems like having a good time, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's, he's smiling. That's important. <laughs> yeah, he's got a great character. And, you know, I think uh, he's got a good energy, uh, especially for, for this level of kids as well. Yeah. And there seems to be about like 20 kids in there. 20, I think he's 25 in that class. Looks like a pretty big class, doesn't it? Yeah, 25. Okay, that's pretty sizable. I, I bet he's got a teaching assistant or a parent or someone, probably more. Yeah. But, um... I know with, yeah, I know with like, uh, small, like bigger classes for like kindergarten classes, there usually is like two other teaching assistant, one for like helping with disciplinary and the other one like, you know, just helping them with bathroom stuff, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, I guess with that age, you really do need someone who can like take them to the bathroom, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to carry on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, interest, well, an interesting little topic there, actually, just because sure. we mentioned teaching assistant, we did something about discipline. Um, 
I uh, always found um, well, I found I found TA is a bit of a mixed bag in that regard because they didn't seem to get a great deal of training on uh, on really kind of uh, what what to do or how to be. Uh, maybe they got some things on what to do, like oh, never never leave the kids alone when there's no adult in the classroom or whatever, you know. Uh, but um, but when it came to like you know discipline with the kids, like there seems to be a whole range, and this was at a very good institution, a whole range of different things that they would do. And some of them were just naturally good, and you could tell they just had experience with kids, or they were into education, or they just knew it themselves. But others some were terrible, like, you know, you get ones that would, you know, just like say stuff to them sternly, and then you get other ones that would like, uh, just be really mousy with them, just like have a conversation with them, blah, 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 blah. oh, teacher, he says, blah, 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 you know, and it's like, what, what is that, you know, is that, is that really a way of, like, dealing with discipline? So I found that a mixed bag, and, 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 and a lot of the time, actually, when there was some sort of disciplinary issue, um, I felt like uh, I wanted to just kind of go in and deal with it myself, like I'd see the TA doing something, and I'd be like, oh, no. You know, but then you have this kind of weird relationship with TAs where, like, you're not their boss. There is a pecking order, but you're not their boss. Like, you can't just sort of push them around, right? You can't just go in and be like, get out of the way and let me deal with this. Um, so, yeah, I always found it a little bit awkward, that, that I don't know what you guys think about that. I personally have not worked with a TA before, so I've not, um, mm -hmm. Because most of the uh, classes that I do teach, private classes, they tend to be smaller groups, so I don't need a TA. And I actually have, um, well, in China, I actually can understand what the kids are saying, even though they don't know that. Right. I do. So thing. when they do need some help, I I understand what they're saying, and I just don't yeah. kind of get it. I just tell them that I guess, and I'm really yeah. good at guessing. <laughs> and they think, I'm, they think I'm magical, like, wow, she's so good. How does she know? I'm like, but I, but I never revealed that I knew what they were saying because they're speaking Chinese that are very simple that even like I can understand it like the yeah. people who's like maybe HSK three could even understand it so I never had to work with the TA but I've had like other in my other classes where like bigger classes with teachers and they would some teachers would actually stand in the back and. Uh, if there is a student that's misbehaving, they would try to correct it. Um, it is awkward, like, uh, you kind of want to give them the respect, otherwise if you don't show them that they are, uh, they have authority, the kids won't think that they have authority as well, right? So you kind of have to give them that room. And I have talked to a teacher after class to, like, kind of, like, talk about the issues with the class about certain students. Um, and I asked her to deal with it, and she couldn't, like, you know, I, I don't know, I just kind of keep asking, kind of make her an ally and asking for help in yeah. that sense, um, and whatever method works with her, because different yeah. teachers seem to have different, dis like, discipline methods that work for them. Some yeah, teachers are better strict, some people mm. are better being friendly about it, yeah. uh, some people are, like, I don't know. So, yeah, right. So you just don't want, like, it, it is very kind of fragile, that you don't want to step on their toes, but you want to still stay authoritative. I always felt like there was a bit of a missing link between, mm -hmm. in this place where I worked, the, the communication between the teacher and the TA. And it, it's almost like, the thing is, you're, you're sort of, you, 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 that time is not scheduled, that is not something you're, that's part of your official responsibilities, wasn't there anyway, to kind of coordinate with the TA. I always thought, I felt like it would be good if it was, you know, if it, if it literally was a, you know, um, you know, you have to be there and there's five minutes before the kids arrive, it's just going to be you and the TA and you just get to have a chat with them about like, this is what we're going to do today and that would be the time when you can say, hey, you know, uh, yeah, you're really good at watching the kids, like maybe you could uh, spend a bit more time like sitting on the tables with them and chatting to them about what they're doing and stuff, mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, that's your opportunity to sort of give them a bit of interaction mm -hmm. and bring them into it a bit. Uh, but, um, it, you know, when it was always something that you'd have to do off your own back. It was never yeah. something that, you know, it wasn't an official thing. And I always felt that that was a bit of a, a, bit of a problem. 
Um, and I, it's almost an oversight in a way. And it's a, one of these things also becomes a bit of a weird issue because the TA, the TAs tend to be like under the management of the local staff, mm -hmm. whereas the teachers are under the manage, the academic management. So you've even got this thing where you get this weird like departmental difference, you know, where. Um, yeah, that's you know, weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's uh, it's interesting because. There's a whole bunch of dynamics, as you both point out, um, that's going on. And you know, I think <coughs> generally what I try to do is try to get across the point that you know what the either the lesson goal is or the goal is overall. You know, for the kids to kind of to learn and to for us specifically to learn English. So you know, there's. Sometimes it takes, especially if you're a more tenured teacher or they're a more tenured assistant or even a teacher because often our TAs, uh, my TA in China is another fellow teacher of that class. They're the homeroom teacher uh, or head teacher, whatever, which way you want to put it. So that, you know, there might be clashes of egos where it's like, well, no, I'm the authority in the class here. Now I'm the authority. If you can kind of set that aside and bridge it to that, well, we're a team, you know, teamwork makes a dream work, you know, let's work together to make sure we can, you know, the kids get the learning, then those classes work a lot better. Uh, what I do to try and signal uh, to the teacher or TA that I'm working with that we're, we're, we're in this together is I, I will initially start to try to get on their wavelength, not energy level, but wavelength is to their style. So, I mean, it's different with TAs because you don't see them watching classes, but like I said, a lot of my TAs, TAs are actually teachers anyway. I will go, you know, and watch their classes or at least go five minutes before my class, five or 10 minutes. So I see how they operate the class see if they have any rules and stuff. I'll ask them, you know, like, do you have any rules? What do you, do? because everyone's got their own system going on. And, you know, I'll, I'll piggyback onto that um, and emulate that because I know that's what works for them. And I'm pretty flexible in that, you know, I can, you know, work my structure around that because, you know, it's just a disciplinary structure that I can kind of, you know, put my own, uh, stamp on and work within is it's not there so they kind of see that I'm wanting to play with them uh, and hopefully you know what I found is that they kind of reciprocate more in that I'm you know they trying to understand what I'm doing um, it doesn't often it doesn't always work um, but more often than not you know I find that when you kind of like give that little bit of respect you kind of get that back and you start to build an understanding and that relationship, which I think is important. It's, and it's sad, like you point out, Rich, that they're often kind of kept separate because, you know, the, when it's more unified, it just works, every, it works best for everyone, the, the TA, the teacher, you, and the kids. It's just sad that they don't allow, aren't allotted specific time to kind of work on that. Mm, yeah. All right. We can carry on. Let's go. Maybe we'll see a TA here. I wonder I love. Oh, they're singing now. <laughs> That's so cute. I originally thought that these blobs were like out of anonymity for the kids, but now I think they're just like spots on the camera, aren't they? Because they're going all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even <laughs> sure. The yeah, I think they're just spots on the camera because I thought they might have been like trying to cut out school logos uh, or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's yeah. a shame. They don't seem to care about that, do they? Because they're just showing all the kids' faces here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm not so good. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm not so good. I'm not. 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 I'm
Why is Jake coming? Yeah. One thing I learned when I first started teaching younger kids is that I didn't realize that kids like the physical touch. Like they want to have like, they want to be hugged and all that stuff. I know it's kind of awkward sometimes, especially with male teachers and stuff. And I didn't think it was acceptable at the beginning, but I realized that once they get that kind of physical affection, they kind of, they, they like it. They want yeah, the high five, they want the I bet they do. Like, I, I, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole myself. <laughs> because it's, I'm protecting myself, you know. Yeah, no, for and sure. We have it drilled into us, you know, like you say, especially as male teachers, but just in general, you know, it's that idea that, you, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't go any, anywhere near it. Uh, the, the closest to that is, like, sometimes, you know, the kids would come and, like, out, you know, so they know, you know, whatever, I'm not talking about teacher, D, D, D. Um, but, like, I would never do what he just did in there, for example, just because, because, unfortunately, that's sort of the, the world that we live in now, isn't it? And I think you're right, it is unfortunate, because they probably do, they probably do want that kind of, you know, if you go back to kind of tribal society, that's kind of probably the relationship they would have had with the educator, you know, it would be a bit more tactile, you know, because it's the educator, the carer, the, almost the parental figure, whether it's their parents or not. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, unfortunate. But. It's shame as well because, you know, <laughs> especially if you're a public school teacher, you should have, a, I mean, even not as a public school teacher, like ourselves, uh, Fanny and I, when we were teaching in uh, China and Korea, we had a criminal background check, so you yeah. know we were, were we were you know by law you know could work with we could work with children um, you know we had training so it it makes sense that if anyone would be allowed it would be a teacher you know and they should be trained to know what's appropriate and what's not so it, you know it kind of makes. But, you know, like, so when I see him, you know, kind of shake the hands, I'm like, for me, that's fine. You know, when he gets, as you mentioned, hugs, I know people are squirrely, they might do like a side hug rather than a that's front right. hug or something like that. But, you know, I, I think it, it, to remove it is, it must seem strange for the kids as well, because, I mean, with the kids that I teach, they're really young and I, they would to come running up to me and you know give me a hug or you know want to hold my hand to go to class and i think if i remember correctly fanny you that was one of your prizes um for uh you know being a, a star student or something like that you they they could either hold your stuff as in you know like pens and books and stuff or they would hold your hand or something is that correct I don't remember, but something that I would do actually. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, just give them the, the it's kind of like the teacher's affection. Like, honestly, like, I remember as a kid that I really wanted my teacher to like me. I wanted to help out, and I kind of used that uh, going forward in my kind of teaching uh, decisions. Like, you know, the kids want to help. They want to do things for you. They want to hold your hand. And with the little kids, actually, I give them hugs, like, you know, um, because, you know, their, uh, their parents are there and they are okay with it. And, you know, mm. so, you know, they're okay with it and I'm okay with it. And the kids like it, then, you know, I do. And there's, there's that affection kind of endears them to you. It just, mm. it creates a, a, I guess, like a better relationship too. And it helps with them listening to you and helps with discipline. When you, because you can say like, oh, I'm really sad. I'm really disappointed that you didn't listen. So can you help listen next time? Uh, can you do, uh, and then it'll make me happy, it'll make you happy, and it'll make things ha easier. So, it's building yeah, a relationship. That. It's building that connection. And once you have that good relationship, it's easier to, you know, manage, um, you know, the yeah. student, the, the child, because you... When they're younger, yeah, yeah definitely that physical affection is, is, it's okay. But as they get older, definitely, you know, I hold back a lot more. I don't, I don't do it because, you know, they're older and they're more aware of their, their own bodies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I think that it becomes about consent, consent, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it is. 
And even in Canada, when you do work with kids, either through summer camp or like volunteer job, you still have to do a communal check mm -hmm. as well. I don't. I, I like to think that it's everywhere. Anytime you work with small children, it, it or like, should be. Yeah, yeah, it should be. I, I think. think I think uh, in yeah in the West it, it's probably legislated. I think probably mm -hmm. in, in China it's probably more like it depends on the institution. You know, I yeah. Yeah, it's uh, definitely. If they do things by the books, I'm sure they have to, but we know that a lot of things go under the table. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, found, um, I think that the, the having the parents in the room probably actually changes it a bit as well. That mm -hmm. probably makes it a lot more comfortable, actually. Um, you know, e e e even having a TA is, is sort of uh, is better than not if you're going to do something like that. But um, yeah, definitely. Definitely, I think having the parents in the room because it's like, well, everybody's there, right? So yeah. They can see uh, that it's, you know, it's harmless interactions and, and yeah. learning. Yeah, absolutely. The parents are always there at the very first classes, like at least for like a couple of days. And then eventually they just leave because they're like, oh, I found they can break free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they, yeah, they'll, exactly. they'll go and then they know what time to come back. And by the time we're seeing our last songs, the parents are there by the window ready to pick them up yeah and my experience with all my classes like a lot of times the first few classes definitely the parents are there the kids feel more comfortable and they would always look to their parents like oh is it okay or they want to show off to their parents to like say look i can do this by the end of the class like um but at the end of the term usually the parents are all gone all class and they only come back at the end but the kids will always like run to them, look how many stars I got today, this is my prize, I got number one. But yeah, or they would show off, like tell them what they can do. Uh, they do that to the parents, but they also do that to me. So at the beginning of the class, when they first come in, they're like, look, I can say this word now, orange, or like, you know, we've been doing colors and shapes for like a month. They can finally say it and they would show it off. And they're very excited. They bring their parents in and they want their parents to know that they're telling me. Yeah, but it's really cute. Yeah. <laughs> I always overreact to those because they deserve it. <laughs> and that's their yeah. reward. It is, that is one of the most amazing things mm -hmm. about uh, teaching kids uh, when you, um, you sort of have some effect on them and uh, they, they kind of like you as a teacher and you know mm -hmm. they've done something special there. And, uh, you know, we've all got those moments with it when, uh, you know, some kids said something or, you know, this, whatever, it's like, you know, I miss my classes with you, teacher rich, or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Or one thing I remember, like, the summer school, like, the, a year later, um, this, this girl who was the mother of a girl from Argentina who I taught, and this is a teenager, you know, she's, this girl was like 15, 16 years old, and, uh, and she wasn't at the school this year, but her mother was the group leader for the Argentinian group. And she come in and she's like, oh yeah, like my, uh, my daughter, like was, she absolutely loved your classes. She still got the hat you give her. Because I, remember, like, I was wearing this hat and she was always, she was pain actually. She was always saying, I want your hat, I want your hat. Um, and then I think one day at the end of the class, like she did something good or whatever, and she was going home and I said, you know, it was, a, it was like a, it was a, a hat, it was a hat of the company, it was a company mm -hmm. uh, cap or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just like, you know, that's amazing. You know, this, this like teenager who, you know, often they don't give down like nothing. She had a bit of a, one of those attitudes, you know. Uh, like still fondly remembers classes with Teacher Rich, you know, and I'm, I'm just kind of like, wow, it's amazing, you know. And you kind of wonder, like, how many of these kids grow up and then still sort of think back and go, like, oh, you know what, that's some classes with teachers. That's incredible, really, isn't it? Like, yeah. comes back to that idea of, like, how teachers are so undervalued <laughs> because the effect that they're having on people is real and lasts for a long time, potentially. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of see a lot of it, you know, with social media now, you know, the teacher appreciation uh, under the teacher appreciation hashtags, you know, where you've got someone that's, you know, not very good at, uh, you know, writing, but then they had that one teacher that's like, oh, this is really creative. And then that, that was that one comment just set them down on a path of, oh, I can try, I can do this. And then they end up being some sort of like author or novelist or something like that, just because of that 
one you know comment the encouraging comment that a teacher gave you know it, they, there's a whole lot of power in that and it really is undervalued and you know you've got a there's a lot of responsibility in in the words that you choose and stuff Uh, I have a story. Um, I was teaching these students for a while, and I'm pretty sure I didn't think the kids liked me at all. But uh, one day, um, they come in, they're really into soccer, or as you guys say, football. Um, he had won some trophy, and he really wanted to show me. And I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know I was important enough for you to show me. So obviously, I take my camera out. I'm like, oh, I need to take a picture of this. Can you pose with the trophy? And he was so happy. Yeah. <laughs> so it was important to him and I you know like yeah you sometimes don't even, like, as teachers you don't realize how how you affect the students and, to, and you, you think oh yeah the student never paid attention he was not very good one of, not one of the good students good students as in like could do the work but they actually try when they're home and they remember you and they want to tell you things and I think when they start telling me things outside of school I think it's when, you know, they actually really like you. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's particularly amazing when you think it's the kid, you know, probably the kid who, who likes you the least, you know, <laughs> the one who's the most trouble, the most pain, whatever, and then it gets to like, well, I'm referring to the summer school again, when it gets to the end of the summer and then one just crying like, and, Oh, did you really show? No. <laughs> I love the classes so much. It's like, why didn't you show it? <laughs> I could never do anything that I asked you to do. But okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. What's your name? My name is Mark. What's your name? Punches them on the head. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> and the artist saying the name, I'd like to see them put that within the sentence. Yeah. So we don't know how many classes in he is. Yeah, that's true. Like whack a mole. I don't know. Mark, why do you do that? He doesn't, want to, he doesn't want to pat them on the head because that's kind of like. And he did the sign, like, good, the good sign. Yeah, 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 he just like, like good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, though. It is funny. Hey. Hey. So small. Hey. Get a tiny How about the kids see that? <laughs> yeah, I would, I would, like, the letter A would cover that whole paper. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, you know, this is magnetic and already established and surely you could get one that's bigger that you can just slap on the board. Um, something we could talk about with that as well is, is there a great deal of value in teaching the I don't need to sing that song. <laughs> yeah, you can sing the song, can't you? Yeah. That's probably a good way of teaching it, isn't it? A, B, C, D, rather than like this. But, um, but the, it, 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 that's the issue. The only time you ever use letters is when you're spelling something out, exactly. which can be useful, but it's very rare that you do it, isn't it? But, but it's, it's also, also like, like the, the basics, basics. Like, like, you know, just like, like the foundation. foundation. 
I mean, yeah, I suppose, I suppose for these kids, right, right um, since they're coming they're from, like, uh, like the Chinese, Chinese alphabet, alphabet, then they, they actually, actually need to familiarise themselves with these weird-looking weird looking symbols. So, so, so to that, that extent, I guess, I guess it kind of leads into reading as well. well. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a little, little bit sceptical of that we need to, to, to teach the, the alphabet. I'll tell you why I do it. Um, I will do it, but I do it with one of my earlier classes, which is about um, names. So what we do is we do like an activity like this, like what's your name, uh, and say my name is blah, 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 and they'll use their, I'll get them to use their, their English name. You know, they can use their Chinese name. It, it doesn't matter. Um, but then... I'll get them to spell their name and then you know I'll have a whole bunch of activities around you know I will I will say the letters and then they have to say the name or they'll have to identify who it is that I'm spelling and stuff like that so that's kind of I kind of integrate it within um, you know, spelling activities along with doing the name, uh, along with doing the name, especially because you know you're going to get a lot of course books where your your one page is that you're supposed to teach is like what's your name. So I I found yeah, that was a good. What's your name? How do you spell it? Is it, is it, it is a good one. Yeah. yeah. It's an authentic big situation, which does actually happen, particularly if these I mean if these kids are like Chinese, then a lot of Westerners might ask them that when they say what their name is. Exactly. How do you spell it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but other than that, I kind of I do lean towards Rich in that you know, outside of doing the alphabet song, is. Does it really help with speaking English? Maybe not so much, but you know, spelling, reading, you know, it's got to be introduced at some point. Writing, yeah. But there might be better ways to introduce it than then just going A, B, C, D. You know, you could just have a whole yeah, lesson around A. I mean, I've, I've never, never, I've never taught uh, kids who. Who don't, don't work, work with, the, with the with the with the Roman alphabet, right? right? Because in, in Vietnam, Vietnam they, they use the Roman, Roman alphabet. Um, so, so I don't, I don't know, know what it's like, like but presumably you have to have like handwriting classes and stuff, stuff with the Chinese, Chinese kids, kids, right? Yeah, you have to actually teach them how to do the A and the B and everything. Yeah. What do you do, Fanny? I do. Uh, we do actually have handwriting classes with uh, kindergarten classes that I teach, and I do have to um, teach them to write. Uh, tracing mostly, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so so you kind of have to do it, you kind of do, and you're right because the Chinese and English, like, are so different, they they learn to write in Chinese, they need to learn to write in English as well, mm -hmm. and learning the alphabet is, like, like I said, I think it's kind of the foundation for them to build up on putting yeah. words together, yeah. and, and even with the phonics, they need to know what A looks like, to know that the A sound. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's a big, it's a big difference when you don't even know the symbol, you don't have a reference for the symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think that would, that would have changed my perspective a bit more, because then you really actually you need to teach the symbol as something. And if you don't teach A as A, then at the very least you still have to teach it as A, and then you start to go, ah, ah, mm -hmm. yeah. so what do you do to see them? Do you see them just come to problems then, don't you? Because is it, or is it? Simple. What do you do? <laughs> you know, you can do all kinds of things. Well, in phonics, when we talk about it, there's always a hard and a soft sound. Uh, it's a long and short. Yeah. That's the vowels. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. With the out, uh, with this uh, consonant, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's, you do, it's the same thing. I remember teaching phonics in Korea. And you teach about the alphabet, alphabet and you teach the consonants. Mm. I can't remember too much now, but yeah, you still have to, there's different ways that sound goes, but you know, it's in reference with words and letters and like pictures. But you never taught it as like all A to Z in one class, it was always segmented, no, it's always right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even, even with writing. writing uh, I, I always break, break it down, down to like either three or four letters at class. 
I would need a younger, younger one to like, like two letters, A and B. Yeah. So yeah, and that's kind of what I was, term. that's what I was kind of prodding at or initially getting at was ABCs, A to Z, uh, the alphabet is great to teach, but it's, it's better if it's, it is segmented so you can cover those different sounds. You can get more in depth mm -hmm. with the phonics and they get more familiar. You know, something like this might be an all right activity if you're, you know, they're already familiar and you're wanting to kind of refresh before they go into spelling names and all yada yada. But just, just teaching this and then expecting that, oh, now they know how to say all these letters within words is, is pretty ludicrous. Well, we'll see what he does. I guess that those sort of big, uh, no, no, no teacher is really into, into, into understanding of language teaching and thinking of teaching alphabets can help people with the pronunciation that much, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's not something I've thought a great deal about anyway, so I don't particularly have a, have a solution. I was just picturing things in my head then about how, like, I might, I might be tempted to teach them as words right from the get-go. But like, like go, go for a load of three letter, letter words, words like cat and dog and stuff mm -hmm. like that and, and like teach, teach the words teach, teach the pictures teach the pronunciation and teach the writing, writing all together yeah yeah just so they have a reference, reference then, right? they write the word dog they say dog they go wolf 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 or whatever um and uh and then they call me the dog cat and that's around whatever they're going to do and then at some point they know how to say the word dog they know that it's dog so then they know d, d off and go, and they can see those letters, letters and they've written them. So, yeah, I, I think I'd be tempted to go like that. that. But um, as, as I said, I don't, I've, I've, never, I've never done it. it. I haven't thought, thought about it a lot. And um, I, I don't, don't know if that's uh, something that any other people do. Or that's generally the, what you describe is generally the phonics course, but kind of um, method. Yeah, they pick out the short words. So there's no dilophones or you know anything that's combining consonants together, uh, and you know keep them as short as possible. Go over those words, and they kind of you, it builds up from that. It's very logical; it makes sense. But it never starts with learning all the alphabet in one go. <laughs> it starts with the words, and then they'll pick words from that are really short that go from. A to Z. I think there was there was a big movement in English language teaching for a bit about phonics. I think there was something called Johnny Phonics or something. And they, it was all about that. And it was all that phonetic stuff. And you got the kids to spell it like d, r, g, uh, dog. And then you know if it's cat, uh, ah. And you actually made a big distinction there between like you know you wouldn't say k, it would be k. Uh, and it wouldn't be t, it'd be t, right, so to get really nailed those phonics down. But I think it's, it's treated with some scepticism because it's something that they tried to do with native kids at one stage, uh, and they end up with a whole load of literate kids uh, from it, so something went horribly wrong with it, because uh, basically all of these kids have then learned that way round. Uh, you know, so then they had this really strong association with the, with the phonemics. Uh, so they wanted to write all the words phonemically, uh, which is not how English works at all. Well, that's uh, one of the so problems that um, people do with spelling, isn't it? They write it down how it sounds. Yeah. So you kind of have to teach the alphabet. Otherwise, you know, your spelling. It's, actually in the, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's in the minority of languages or popular languages in, in, in that regard. Uh, most languages are much more phonemic. Yeah. English is very, very uh, not, not a phonetic language. Difficult. Yeah. All right, we, uh, yeah, let's crack on with this. Yeah. Why? <coughs> Uh oh. Crashing. Go to red alert. Use the stick. Use the stick. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Go. 
don't know what happened there. Uh -huh. That went in pretty quickly, didn't it? One, two, three, in prison basically uh, uh, these are delinquents <laughs> yeah generally they had bars on the the windows because the windows <laughs> open wi wide open out. yeah well, it's pr I was just thinking it might actually be to stop people getting in uh, rather than the other way around right it's like security for kids would those windows stop the kid from going the pencil case no, definitely not. Ready? Clothes. Round clothes. Pajamas. Pink pajamas. Socks. Round socks. Okay, so is this clothes or in colours? Pants. Clothes in colours. A grey shirt. Yeah, a skirt. A green skirt. Yeah, yeah. This is good stuff, but it feels like he's standing quite far away in tiny pictures. Yeah. Yeah. This was a great vision. Pants. Pants. Well, the good just be little things. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I feel like you should like be sat on the floor and maybe you should get them to come really close and then you could hold up the thing like you wish, you know? Oh, this is a bit of a Yes, one. Oh, so what? Three. Number? Well, they seem to know numbers. I wonder what he's going to go with, because that's an awful lot of vocabulary right now. You it seems, oh, did the clothes, but no song, now we did numbers, and there's And there was colours as well, so I'm not sure if this is, he's introducing something new, because I, I, I wouldn't introduce colours and clothes at the same time. I would do it one by one. So I'm presuming uh, that he's already pre-taught some of this and maybe this is a review or something. It seems to be a lot of... Re we might be one of those things where you kind of repeat a lot of stuff, you yeah. know? Because I guess with little kids, it really goes in, sinks in well, doesn't it? You just do the oh, repetition. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, well, that's kind of what we, what you do is you build, you're, you're building a house of English in that, you know, like one week you're, you do uh, colours and then 
one week you're doing clothes and then you do the, like, the class where they talk about the clothes and then you go, okay, now what color are the clothes in the next class and then you, you've done numbers before, then you start counting the clothes and then you start combining it all together and then be like, how many, um, you know, of this color clothes. So it all kind of builds and that's how you stop the repetition, you know, being monotonous, you kind of, your mind what you've previously learned with them. Uh, you know, I'm presuming that's what he's doing. I'm not sure. But we'll see, I guess. Ready? Oh, it's CD time again. What's this? It's the morning. Oh, oh. cut. Cut. Yeah, that was maybe a cut. They, they, they skip the music, skip the copyright claim. Oh, it's got a little tape oh, oh, okay. There you go. This is what Rich is talking about. Get those kids on the floor where they deserve to be. <laughs> he looks so big on that chair, though. It's like a tiny little chair up the knee. Like it's a colored shirt, shirt, like it's a shirt, shirt, like it's a colored shirt, 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 sh
that they have time with. Um, if it's a rules place, place then yeah, you probably have little classes because he's probably teaching at other places. places. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what they, they do with foreign teachers, teachers and it's a rural area. That's what they have in all the different, all the, like, many schools. It did look a bit more, but it was rather than a... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, PowerPoint. <laughs> there, was there was some, some excellent, excellent yeah, right? I didn't, I didn't even, even have, have uh, hollow teachers. Five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel, yeah, I feel like, uh, he, you know, there was some great, like, routine demonstration, some great classroom management stuff, some great, um, uh, yeah, like classroom control and moving the kids back and forth and all that and all that kind of stuff. But you're absolutely right that what we missed there is kind of an overall uh, cohesion. I mean, it was like a, it was like activity, 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 and what was the link between them? Alphabet, numbers, uh, some random vocabulary, a skirt, a grey skirt, and then it became a skirt, it's a skirt. Yeah. Uh, so we went from colours to that. Um, so, so yeah, yeah it's, it's a, bit, a, bit a bit hodgepodge, hodgepodge in, that, in, that in that regard, but I think his, his general approach to the teacher, I thought, was, um, I felt like it was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, he seems like he's really good with the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they seem to really like him. And um, he addressed, apparently, there was that one problem in the class, but that one kid, yeah, well, yeah. right away. Yeah. Maybe there was a pushing or something like that, or some cajoling, some shenanigans. Someone started eating their own shoelace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I would love to have seen, you know, the the full class because that couldn't have just been the class. Um, the, because, it, I mean, it was just very, it's too teacher, too teacher centric. And I wanted to see more freer, more freer activity, well, as free as you can be when you've got a room full of 25, you know, three to four year olds. But, you know. I was just thinking, what, what would a three to four year old do that's freer? I don't know, that would be interesting to know. Well, you know, stuff like, um, putting, you know, like the old tropes of like putting flashcards at different parts of the room and going, okay, um, it's a skirt and then they have to, you know, run or walk slowly and carefully to that. a skirt. Yeah. I have done that and it, it, it can, can be, be quite disastrous, disastrous. even with like five, five kids. kids. It, they, they, they fought for it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was that I, I didn't, didn't do it again. again. No, but not to um, grab the flashcard, so just to move to that area. Stand there. Yeah. yeah, you know, like yeah, you yeah, give the verbal, better. it's uh, whatever, and they have to go to that area. But yeah, yeah, this, this or thing. Or you could even do it with, with like the flashcards in the front of the room, and they just have to line up. up. Like, like even with how his uh, hello, how are you song, he's, he's got three options. options. It's good, it's great, I'm wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then you can just like have three lines and say, like, what are you? And they can just line up in the how they are feeling. Spoken like a true yes. kindergarten teacher. <laughs> what, 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 what would you do for a more freer activity? So you've, you've been given this um, vocabulary of clothes. You've introduced mm -hmm. the clothes. They've done, you've done the drill where they repeat what it says. What's next for Fanny? So, they send the clothes, they send the clothes, um, they send the clothes, 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 Oh, maybe, maybe like, you know, have, have the two, he's, he's got, got the piano, piano. maybe take, take the flashcards, it's a skirt, it's a sweater, mm -hmm. and say, the, the teacher say something, have, have two kids, come line up, up say, it's a skirt, and, and they have to decide which one is the skirt, and they will stand in front of it, and they will, and then you can give the points, that's a game, I just, that could, could be a game. game. And then they, they line up the next two people, and, and you change the flashcard, it's a sweater. And they line up to the sweater, and you can do the colors as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's more controlled than my randomly running yeah. to different parts of the room. 
it's hard with younger kids to have free activity. They have to. There has to be some kind of sense of control because. They don't. They need directions. Yeah, I guess that's why we use more songs with the younger kids because、mm -hmm. they can be freer with their dancing、mm -hmm. and movement and stuff, but they are still within the confines of using the structures of the they song. Need some set of rules to follow. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, I, I know with my classes, classes like you know, we do several songs throughout the class. At the end of the class, I. Let, let them choose. choose. Like whoever, whoever had the most points that day, they get to choose what song they want to do. And then I made it a little different in the sense that I made these songs hide behind these different color gift boxes, and they have to choose the color. And it's a random song, and then they get that song, and then they can dance to that song. And when that ends, the next student can choose. And we taught them actions, and then they don't get them wrong. Yeah. But I know you break up your classes because you actually teach you teach the writing. So you know when I know when you do the, if they say oh it's a skirt, you do all the drills and you get them to say stuff. You you do a song, but then you'll also then after the song you'll go back to they have to kind of like put the sticker of the word skirt next、mm -hmm. to the picture of the word skirt, or they have to write it or something like that. So. You are you're bouncing between activities that way. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I do bounce, bounce between activities. Whether it's、uh, so, usually we do like that kind of dancing、uh, introduction song, and that's why it's important for me to teach them stand up and sit down. Because when they have to start using their books, they have to sit down. So that needed them to understand that. And I usually well, I have a PowerPoint. I usually demonstrate on the PowerPoint how to fill it out, and I go step by step. So for coloring, I would do particle color first, and then I would show where to color in case they didn't know. So then they would just color.、Um, they would write, and I would show. I would animate my PowerPoint to look like the lines are covered in, so they they can follow to do the lines. And when that's done, and I check, I usually go check and I give them a star or a sticker when they finish that page to make sure that they actually do their page. And then the end is when I do the freer activity of what we would do.、Um, yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah so for him, he doesn't do any writing because there's more students.、Mm -hmm. But because I have less students, I'm able to individually check every single page that they do on their work. Mm-hmm. Right.、So, yeah. Uh huh. That's great. <laughs> Marvelous. So, so when are we getting Kulak on? I want to、so、drink. I want to drink the Kulak Kade. Oh, with with puns like that, he's got to come on now. So,、uh, Mark, if you are watching this,、um, you know we are big fans.、Uh, we'd love to hear more of your thoughts on、um, teaching、uh, of that class.、Uh, please drop us a message. Leave us a comment.、Uh, if you're someone that's a big fan of Mark. You know,、uh, at him. You know, send him a counsel. Yeah, hassle him. <laughs> <laughs> leave, leave, leave comments, comments on all his videos, videos saying these, these guys, guys on ELT, ELT under the covers have been slagging you off. You've got to go <laughs> on and defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to have any of this, Mark Larky. I presume that he uses his name in, in the same way as the Rock, <laughs> just talking in the third person. Please, Mark, come on. Rip, rip off my. my Crispy Chris meme <laughs> for his branding. But yeah, we are all marks for Mark. So、uh, <laughs> come on, we'd love to have you on. Ends won't end. <laughs> It won't. We're we're leaving our mark on on YouTube right now, and we also want him on our channel as well. <laughs> I was I was pretty impressed, and、uh, and. You know, listening to Fanny talk about the the kindergarten stuff and everything, you know, kind of gets me excited about it. You know, it's almost like, oh yeah, I want to like give it a go. <laughs>、uh, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. It seems like I'm very much transitioning to into the online and the the, the ones to ones and the adults and everything. Kind of,、mm, I don't know. That seems to be the direction that the thing is going in right now for me.、Um, but yeah, no, it's、uh, very interesting.、Mm. 
it's uh, yeah, uh kind of watching, watching these uh, videos, videos sorry yeah go ahead i'm saying watching, watching these i've been watching, watching these videos and kind of uh, uh talking about, about my experience kind of making me miss it a little, little bit, bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not working, working with kids anymore but um i've had i have really, really fond memories of them yeah wonderful wonderful <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video um, if you'd like to talk about kindergarten, if you want to talk us to talk more about kindergarten classes, you're going to have to leave comments. You're going to have to like, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, we're not going to do one of these again. And especially if you want to see more of Fanny, you have to leave those comments. You have to uh, leave at least three comments. It's like saying Beetlejuice before she actually appears <laughs> on another YouTube video on our channel. Um, but really, thanks again for coming on, Fanny. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, I've been Neil of Team Teacher Fame, and you know, Fanny is of Team Teacher Fame as well. You can find our stuff, our PowerPoints that Fanny mentions on TeamTeacherChina.com. We've got our videos on Team Teacher China YouTube, and we've got Team Teacher Baby, which is our journey as parents and teachers and combining that experience. And then we have <coughs> Team Teacher English, where we take those PowerPoint videos and we put them into stealth study uh, animations um, from those PowerPoints. And over to you, Rich. YouTube.com, Officer Rich, Rich, Rich Gaming, do a search on YouTube, uh, BritishPlease.com, uh, CrispyChris.com is for sale, 1995 American dollars. If anyone wants to buy that for me, then you can buy that and you can email me at ELT under the covers at gmail.com. And I'll be much appreciated also if you'd like to come on the show and talk about novel ways of creating interesting and creative cuisine. Oh, wait, no, that's a different show. But if you come on and talk about teaching, then you can also contact us. Comment down below uh, or send an email to ELT under the covers at gmail.com. We check it out once every two months. Two months? Yeah, yeah, we should step that up to like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I check it once every hour. hour. <laughs> <laughs> Including throughout the night. Come on, has anyone emailed us? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, Mark? Um, so, <laughs> yeah. as customary, when we have a guest on uh, ELT Under the Covers, they have the final word, they have the final thought of the day. Uh, drop some knowledge on us, Fanny. You know, hit those bombs. Well and <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. And party on, dude. <laughs>